Men's Test Match Rugby folks is back this weekend with Japan hosting the All Blacks. Two teams that don't meet each other that often, but uh, they are going to play this Saturday. We'll go through some stats and lineups and predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one may be going to go. Remember, if you're in the States and you want to watch it, it's on Flow Rugby. So Flow Rugby, check it out. Link in the description. Um, Japan recently played Australia A. Eh? And I think Japan's record since the 2019 Rugby World Cup against Tier 1 Nations... It's been pretty bad. Uh, they've just not really won. Like, they beat Uruguay this year, lost to France. They've played the British and Irish Lions. They've played Ireland. Uh, Japan, I think, clearly misses out on having a Six Nations or a Rugby Championship to compete in. Uh, recently, they did play Australia A in a three-match series, which they lost 2-1. to one. And as far as I'm aware, because they didn't broadcast it here, but it was pretty much the Japanese main team that was playing in those games so a good kind of prep chance for them to uh just to get more game time and basically because that seems to be the one main thing these guys are lacking and the team that they've named is not all that different from the team that played in the last game against australia where they actually won it the game had 100 plus points in it it was uh, seemingly a pretty crazy one uh inagaki sakate and ku are in the front row uh sakate is captain at hooker inagaki Continues to power on as a, a very classy loose head, and Ji Won Koo is um, is back. I don't think he played in the uh, the recent series against Australia, A, but he is back in the lineup and he starts at tight head. Duns and Cornelson's the same lock and duo that played against Australia, A. and the back row is one area that Japan tends to have a pretty tidy uh, look and outfit. Man, no matter what team they seem to field, you got Michael Leach, the veteran at six. Kazuki Himeno is back at 7. He'll be very familiar to New Zealand rugby fans, uh, having had a stint over here with the Highlanders and then to Vita Tatafu. If you're looking for a big unit at number 8, he is your guy. His um, his clash with Hoskins Satutu will be certainly one to watch. Uh, Nagare and Yamasawa are the 19 combo. I can't remember seeing Yamasawa play that much. I'm pretty sure I have seen him play, but I'm pretty sure he's still single-digit cap, so a fair bit of pressure on him. Uh, to get the job done against the likes of New Zealand, which is a, uh, a pretty big test for them, but hopefully he steps up. Nakamura and Riley, the same 12-13 combo. I think Nakamura's pretty much established himself as the first choice 12 in Japan in recent times. Uh, Fufita and Matsushima are on the wings. Uh, Matsushima obviously made a big name for himself in the, um, in the Rugby World Cup, but also was you know operating in Super Rugby prior to that. Uh, Fafita, uh, if you're looking for a big unit of a winger, I've been a little bit critical of him in the past for being a little bit not that kind of defensively orientated, but I think he is coming along since he's got a few more test matches under his belt, but he's certainly a danger man on that left wing, and then Yamanaka is kind of a safe pair of hands distributor uh, at 15 as well. Uh, the bench, Hino Miller and Takeuchi are the front row replacements. Uh, Shimokawa is there in the number 19 jersey. I think he might be on debut. Forgive me if uh, I'm mistaken, but I don't remember seeing him play. Uh, Makisi, <coughs> four-cap guy, uh, the other replacement forward. And it's three backs. They didn't go with a 6-2 split. The Japanese Saito, Lee, and Vanden Hiva are the uh, the remaining back replacements. So, um, yeah, Lee is a guy we saw operate a fair bit at 10 uh, in recent times, but he's been kind of relegated to the bench. He started the last game against Australia A at 10, but... Um, not to be this time. Interestingly, when you look at Japan's stats, they're certainly changing and evolving from the team that played in 2019. And the most obvious change for mine is they just kick it a lot more than they used to. They always generally used to just be play at a hectic pace, pass the leather off the ball, and uh, don't really kick it that much. It was just like huge passing rates, just pass, 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 pass. We're going to work teams off their feet. But uh, yeah, the game plan has evolved a bit since then, so it'll be interesting to see how they go up against the All Blacks. Um, Japan are 10th in the world. They're playing the All Blacks, who are fourth. Remember the All Blacks coming off their rugby championship victory. It was, I guess, from a lot of New Zealanders' point of view, not the most convincing with a home loss to Argentina, and they opened up with an away loss uh, in South Africa, but they still managed to win the, the tournament. And Ian Foster's basically said, this test is a chance for some of the guys who are short on minutes to get a run. And it's very evident from the lineup. Uh, Bauer, Coles, and Lalala are the front row. Coles apparently had a bit of a niggling calf injury. 
only like a week or so ago, but he seems fit enough to play now. Uh, Bauer is back into the 23, and Lalala gets a start after being on the bench in that final game of the Rugby Championship. He is kind of short on game time. Uh, Ritalik and Vai are the lock-in duo, so Vai uh, steps in at number five. Remember, Whitelock uh, had like an ear issue, so he's kind of been late to join up with the All Blacks. Frizzell, Kane, and Satutu is the back row. Remember, Kane missed that final Rugby Championship game, so he is captain. He's back at number seven. Frizzell also missed the final Rugby Championship game. He's back at six, and Satutu is one of those guys who was kind of short on minutes. Remember, with Savia pretty much always occupying... The uh, number eight jersey, barring that one game he missed when his wife was um, having their their, their baby. Um, yeah, so Tutu, he gets a run. And he needs to take that chance with both hands because Savi ain't going anywhere. So, so, so Tutu, I think, with his ball playing, genuinely offers something a bit different. So good chance for him. Uh, Finlay Christie is another one. Like, they've played Aaron Smith a lot this season. Uh, with Finlay Christie kind of being limited to cameos from the bench. He gets a start, so it's definitely a chance for him to put his hand up as well and say that I'm not just here to be Aaron Smith's understudy. Um, Wong is still a 10, and the midfield, I think most fans will be happy to see Roger Tui Vasa Sheik at 12. He certainly has got a detractors here in NZ. People saying he's kind of been fast-tracked undeservedly into the AB's lineup, but man, he needs to have a start. If he's going to be in all Blacks contention, he needs to have a start. To see what he can actually do. This is one of those chances. Uh, he's alongside uh, Braden Enor in the midfield. So yeah man. Like if you're talking about. The All Blacks have a very limited number of games to go before the World Cup. And needing to put in a good shift. Roger is. Uh, and Braden Enor to be fair. Uh, are both in that boat. Uh, Seve Reese, Caleb Clark on the wings. And Stephen Perofeta. A guy who's been extremely limited to like what one minute. Uh, in AB's colours, he gets a start at uh, 15 as well. So another guy who um, needs to make the most of the opportunity. I would imagine guys like Peter Fetter, Tui Vasashek and a few others are probably in line to travel with the All Blacks 15 after this game. I remember they're going to play a couple of games, so we will um, we'll kind of watch that with interest. Taukiaho, Tunga Fasi and Lomax are the replacement front rowers. Tu Polotu, who was initially in the All Blacks 15, uh, is the replacement lock. Papa Li'i. Drops to the bench to make way for Sam Kane. Aaron Smith likewise on the bench. David Harvilli and ALB. Uh, ALB, it's good to see him back in black. Very limited game time this season. You'll notice there's kind of no like out and out 10 on the bench. But I mean, you got Harvilli, you got Peter Fetta, So you got guys who can kind of uh, fill in if needs be. you got a fair few kind of utility players. I um, mean, Roger can go out to the outside backs if needed. Um, Enor's pretty flexible as well. So, yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how some of the guys who are short on minutes actually go now that they're given a chance. Um, interestingly, like statistically, when you look at the ABs, especially in the rugby championship, they seem to be kind of a momentum team. Like when they got some confidence going and they chucked the ball around like a lot more offloads, they tended to have fewer coughed up balls and more success. I don't know what it is. Like you would assume. The more offloads, the more ball you're going to cough up. But that's not been the way the All Blacks have been playing. When they've been kind of in their shells and a bit nervous, they've not played that well and they have dropped the ball. But when they've been playing with confidence and just chucking the ball around, um, like an AB's team of old, they've actually looked the business. So we will see how they go. Uh, the history between these two teams is pretty shallow, like I mentioned, with only four games, as far as I'm aware, being played from 1995 through till 2018. I mean, you got 145 to 17 in that, that first game they ever played. Uh, all kinds of records broken that day. So, um, yeah, not very relevant. Um, 2018 is the most recent game. There's a fair few guys in that Japanese lineup who played uh, in that game. So, yeah, not totally relevant. It was 69 points to 31 back in 2018. So, um, yeah, the predictions-wise, All Blacks by 29, according to the bookies, and All Blacks by 30, according to the rugby forecast algorithm, I guess with the Japanese guys having that game time together with uh, the games against Australia A, whereas the All Black side is a bit more, um, maybe lacking a bit of cohesion, having a few weeks off from yourself, the Japanese guys, but also a lot of guys getting minutes who didn't get minutes in the previous games. Maybe that is a factor. Uh, it is from Tokyo. It's on at 4.50 local time, which is kind of an evening game here in New Zealand on the Georgian Nika Amushikeli is the ref, so fingers crossed we're not talking about him. Come the end of the game. Oh, this game clashes with the Black Ferns game as well. So you kind of have to pick and choose which one you watch live and which one you watch delayed. The Black Ferns quarterfinal up against Wales on at the same time. That's been very, 
uh, controversial here in NZ about how they mucked it up. But uh, they just basically said, yeah, we, we, we stuffed that up. So not a good look, but they shouldn't do that again, I would imagine, with the, uh, with the outcry. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Super Brew Pool, if you're interested, you got like a day left to get in before the competition starts. If you know your predictions, uh, there'll be a Super Brew link down in the description as well. But um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts. How do you reckon this one is going to go? All Blacks pretty comfortable winners, do you reckon? Or do you think the Japanese at home... And maybe with a bit more cohesion can get the job done. You guys let us know your thoughts and I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.